explaining why such an overlooked subject is so important to me and why I feel the need to share it in a video has to do with a story of mine from probably a few years back. During this period of my life, I put on no noticeable muscle, actually lost strength, felt like shit, every single biomarker that I had went down, including my testosterone, and the biggest thing that impacted all of it, and why I think this video is going to be almost fully centered around, was my sleep. My sleep quality was awful. I was getting probably four to five hours of sleep a night, and not the good kind of sleep either. And sleep is the most overlooked factor by people in the gym. You know, everyone gets their training and most people get their diet down, but probably 20%, maybe even less than that, of the people who go to the gym and lift and try to get like the most strength, the most performance, actually have their sleep down. When talking to people I know who are in the gym about how much sleep they got, five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, maybe seven hours of sleep. And the best way that I can put it is, do you want to get better? And they usually go, yeah, I want to get better. Sleep more. And they're like, and I'm like, do you want to get better? Sleep more. That's what you have to do. Sleep is where all the gains are made. It's where all your energy comes from. All the central nervous system adaptations that you make and your brain makes are made during sleep. And so having that period of eight to nine hours, that's a lot. But if you're try, especially if you're trying to do a recomp, eight hours is the bare minimum. And if you're trying to perform at top performance all the time, I'd even suggest nine hours, especially if you're training hard. That much sleep will change your life, both in terms of how fast you can think, the biomarkers, your testosterone will go through the roof compared to where it was at when you're getting your shit sleep, as well as strength, size, you'll feel more confident, you'll look better. I mean, who doesn't want all these things? And to start it off, we have to understand what the types of sleep are. And so there's a sleep called REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement, which occurs in cycles of 90 to 120 minutes. And in this type of sleep, your muscles don't really recover, but our brain does along with our central nervous system. And so you won't really get a ton of recovery for the muscles, but it is super important. And during this type of sleep, you will dream as well too. The big heavy hitter is the non-REM sleep, which is the deep sleep where all of your body's muscles recover due to the increased uh, pool of blood. Um, vasodilation occurs, which means more blood goes to your muscles. And the nutrients that you consume during your day are made a lot more available to the muscles. Um, and this is kind of like the one that you guys would want to tap the most. And this occurs during the deep sleep where you would not be dreaming. Um, having a lot of dreams is a sign of not sleeping well, which is kind of interesting because most people think dreaming is good. And I do enjoy a good dream. But if you're truly trying to get like the most restful sleep, dreams are not a sign of being super restful. To break down the factors that we are trying to make. So our sleep hygiene, that's what it's called. Sleep hygiene can be the best. Um, the first thing we got to look at is the temperature in the room. Cool temperature is the best, both in terms of relaxation and avoiding the disruptions that heat causes in our sleep cycles. You know, our body constantly changes sleep schedules. It changes the type, um, the length, and if we don't have the right temperature in the room, disruptions will be caused and we won't hit the proper ones for the right amount of time or go through the proper transitions. Being in the dark is a huge thing due to melatonin secretion, which we'll talk about later, but having light in the room was shown to decrease sleep by a ton. Even having a light under someone's knee, I think it was a red light under someone's knee, was shown to increase um, the disruptions that were caused, which is crazy. Like your body knows all these things. So imagine having light in front of your eyes, your computer's in the corner of your room, all these things, um, when compared to how little uh, or how much of a little light can affect you are going to cause massive distributions in your sleep quality. Um, and that's exactly what we don't want. Sound is also a huge thing too. Along with the eyesight, sound will pull you out of sleep and prevent you from getting into the deep sleep where your muscles will be recovering. So we explain melatonin secretion. As we go throughout our day, melatonin increases and should be at its highest when we're about to go to bed in the night. Um, we you can improve this through supplementation, turning your lights off, you being... Uh, shown like a bright lights before you go to sleep actually oh, I think it's almost fully decreases the amount of melatonin in your body So you try to avoid all those lights especially when you're trying to go to bed and especially when you're asleep um, You don't want to be given any of those because it just all wipes out the melatonin that's in your body There's a few different types of melatonin such as fast-release melatonin or slow-release melatonin um, Slow-release mel melatonin I cannot speak is like a continual one that um, is more of like a timed thing So it slowly will diminish 
And then the fast release melatonin is just one where it just puts it in your body and then it kind of just kind of quickly uh, dissipates after a while. We don't want melatonin to be in our bodies when we wake up. Um, that is a sign of not being fully awake as well as it'll lower your testosterone. Surprisingly, um, actually kind of does make sense if our body's trying to be asleep. We want to have high testosterone, low melatonin in the morning um, and through the most part of our day just because having that high melatonin will prevent us from fully waking up and fully you know, reaping the benefits of our day and activity. One should also avoid electric magnetic frequencies, EMF. And this comes from Wi-Fi, this comes from our computers, all of our devices. Um, and there's been studies done where they put like rats in a cage and monitor their sleep and even people. And the people that were surrounded by their phones had them really close. Um, first of all, their testosterone got lowered, which is kind of crazy. Um, the, the rat's balls actually shrunk when surrounded with different electric frequencies. If you think about it, it's literally radiation. How good is radiation when like put next to our balls and our cells? I mean, everything has a price and that will throw you off massively. Um, but also in terms of sleep quality too. I mean, if you have a ton of electric magnetic frequency all around you, your sleep quality will suffer just due to the constant brain wave um, irritation that it does cause. Um, all things to think about, I mean, it's certainly a little bit less of a defined science, but there are studies that prove this exists and that we should make it, um, we should be wary of the consequences that it could cause. Sleep supplements such as zinc to help your central nervous system adapt and improve sleep quality are incredibly important. I mean, zinc is something that so few of us have adequate amounts of and improving the amount of zinc in our body, we can uh, decrease the sleep latency so it'll allow you to fall asleep faster as well as increase your testosterone and your CNS capabilities. Uh, magnesium increases the amount of the GABA neurotransmitter in our body. GABA is something that helps induce sleep, helps us hit those deep sleep levels as well as relax and hit that state of you know uh, rest versus you know restless and it's incredibly important um, and so many people don't have it enough of it in your body um, it can be found in a bunch of raw meats a bunch of meats to my knowledge as well as like actual like standalone supplements but magnesium is also one of those huge things for testosterone because it directly affects our sleep um, all these things kind of play off each other just having high testosterone having good magnesium having good zinc and it's kind of like the best way to do it is to have like a bunch of it all throughout your day um, and the other one is the melatonin that we talked about earlier and that can mean like the fast release or slow release as long as it doesn't like prevent your body from waking up in the morning um, it is good to have at least a little bit of I do recommend that people microdose their melatonin when I was taking over five grams I noticed that I was just constantly tired throughout the day I would really struggle with waking up in the morning um, so I tell people to actually microdose it if you have like the five milligrams cut it into pieces and like have a small one if you have the one milligram that's perfect one to two milligrams of melatonin to help ease your body into that sleep is a lot better than forcing into that sleep and preventing your body from waking up just due to the increased amount of melatonin in your body having a morning ritual is almost as important as the before bed ritual that you have um, not immediately like putting yourself in darkness um, not immediately like forcing your body into like an extreme fight or flight um, is incredibly important to remember you think about it I mean, you have a good amount of stress like you have good stress in your brain when you wake up that kind of forces you out of that sleep good stress not too much not too little and you can increase this by getting directly in front of like sunlight direct sunlight is, is best for like 10 to 30 minutes or if you have to in like winter the screens or even just getting outside when it, like there's at least some brightness out there your body absorbs the sunlight and produces the good stress the good cortisol and then when you're about to go to bed it also actually um, allows your body to slow down um, if you don't do this and you don't get sunlight in the morning that stress is actually produced later on in the day when you're trying to sleep and all of that you know trying to like slow down is um, just immediately kind of pushed into your morning routine so it kind of reverses it depending on how you choose to do it and I recommend that people you know sort of take advantage of um, the time that they have in the morning to wake up and do all this one should also avoid having super high stress in their day just because that creates um, protein breakdown having super high cortisol decreases the amount of carbs that are used and it increases the amount of protein that is used to fuel our daily tasks and this can result in having your, your body having less muscle to um, repair overnight and sustain your body through the day um, and, and it should be using carbs instead of the protein we want our body to be um, a, a well acting machine and when it's not using the carbs um, it uses the protein and the protein is not a good energy source first of all but it's also not a great uh, for muscle growth either 
Before bed, one should also avoid huge meals. Having a ton of digestion just going on at night isn't good for sleep quality or sleep depth, you know, getting into the right states of sleep. Um, having maybe some protein before bed might be beneficial, like taking a slow digesting protein, such as like a plant protein, um, maybe even way depending on how your body deals with it. But one should avoid like huge massive meals because having like a messy gut at night is awful and having bad sleep is more likely to increase your chance of gut problems and vice versa. Like they just kind of play off of each other. I hope all of this helps someone. I mean, there's certainly some things that I'm like talking about today that I'm not the best at, but as I've sort of, you know, noticed my daily routine where I can improve the problem areas, I've been able to really improve my quality of sleep. I've been getting eight to nine hours a night, sometimes even 10, depending on how hard I'm training or the amount of work on my day. And it has all really benefited both my mental performance and my performance in the gym. Um, so this is all stuff that you guys can do. If you're looking for stuff on how to uh, dose the zinc and magnesium and melatonin, I'd check out Primal Thrive on social media. Uh, the guy has helped me a ton in my testosterone optimization and just optimizing the variables of my day, including my sleep. And like I said before, all of this plays against each other. And the best way that we can get great at all these things in life is to do what we can. And by doing what we can, we can make our life better. We can make our lives better for the ones around us and bring so much more enjoyment and longevity to our day. So hope you guys enjoyed me. Follow me on Instagram at Pure Zasberry. Um, I'm trying not to be super loud just because I'm in an apartment building and the walls are super you know, narrow. So people can probably hear me out my door right now, but that is perfectly fine. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me. This is a ton of fun. I love talking about these things. So I'll see you guys later. Peace.